If you would like to sit down now, please. A very warm and, I hope, reasonably dry welcome to St. George's Cathedral as we gather today for this service of reflection and thanksgiving. My name's Father Francis Murphy. I'm the acting dean here of this, one of three Catholic cathedrals in London, first built in the 19th century. It was destroyed by bombing in 1941. And very little of the original remains. It was rebuilt. A potent reminder that where we seem to have reached the end, new beginnings can emerge. And that's a theme we might dwell on today. There's only one piece of housekeeping I'd like to bring to your attention, and that's to ask you, please, if you haven't already, do switch off your mobile phone so that we can avoid interruptions during the service. I say again, a very warm welcome. If this is your first time here, it is with great pleasure that we welcome you here. Good morning. It is my great pleasure and privilege to welcome you all here today to St George's Cathedral on behalf of the London and the South East Committee of Anatomists. We are all here today to first and foremost remember and also to show our immense gratitude to all of those who so selflessly donated their bodies to medical schools across London and the South East of England. I am Dr Amanda Hunter, the former Director of the Anatomy Centre and current Honorary Visiting Senior Lecturer at the Anglia Ruskin School of Medicine. The Anglia Ruskin School of Medicine is one of the eight medical schools contributing to the London and the South East Committee of Anatomists. As a newer medical school within the area, the work of this committee, the London Anatomy Office and most importantly the altruistic individuals who donate their bodies for anatomical examination are pivotal in providing the gold standard of anatomy education, allowing your students to wholly appreciate the variation and the complexity of the human form. Anatomy is at the core of medical education. Each year within the Anglia Ruskin Centre of Anatomy, over 1,000 students engage with hands-on anatomical examination all centred around our silent teachers. These individuals may be undergraduate medical students, undergraduate forensic students, postgraduate physicians associates, or even clinicians engaging in continuous professional development to consolidate and enhance their knowledge and understanding of the application of clinical and surgical techniques. As well as the invaluable hands-on experience that our students have from our silent teachers. The gift of body donation also teaches our students invaluable lessons in dignity, respect, teamwork and professionalism, the likes of which cannot be transferred from a textbook. So, on behalf of the London and South East Committee of Anatomists, I extend my thanks to you all and to your loved ones. To donate one's body is truly the most selfless gift a person can give a gift that will continue to impact today's students, tomorrow's doctors and patients for generations to come.
I would like to give thanks for this opportunity to express my gratitude for the invaluable gifts of our donors. The human body is wonderfully complex and intriguing to study. Anatomy is a subject that fascinates me. I feel so incredibly privileged to have been able to practice medicine thanks to the generous donation of the selfless donors. There are areas of medicine that simply cannot be learnt from reading a textbook, examining a model, or from an animation on a computer screen. Our donors play a huge part in enabling us to have a realistic, hands-on approach to education and medical practice. The lessons I've learned from anatomy will stay with me throughout my medical career and will inevitably help me to treat many patients in the future. Your loved ones have given me an appreciation for the beauty that lies within us all. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank you, the friends and families of the donors. I hope it brings comfort knowing that your loved one's gift of donation has provided myself and my peers with an exceptional education. The generosity and willingness to support medical education through donation is something that goes beyond what mere words can ever describe. A quote by the Canadian physician William Osler encapsulates the crucial role that our donors play in our journey to become doctors and healthcare professionals. He who studies medicine without books sails an enchanted sea, but he who studies medicine without patients does not go to sea at all. I'm honoured to have had the opportunity to have been educated by your loved ones as they have been my silent teachers as well as my very first patients. Again, to the families, friends and to the donors themselves, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We will all remember them and be ever grateful throughout our careers and for the rest of our lives. Thank you. I'd like to say that I appreciate this honour to speak here today. Today can be seen in a variety of ways. However, the way I see today is an opportunity to pay my respects and say thank you for the gift so graciously given by, the love, by your loved ones for the education of us studying medicine. Their decision does not just allow us to study and learn, but it allows us to, the ability to pursue our dream professions, which is a, a truly priceless gift. My journey through medical school to this current point I am in in my studies has been enhanced by the gift of donation and the choice of the donors that have made and will not be taken for granted. The educational skills we obtain through the means of body donation has moulded the future of healthcare professionals, including myself. It is an incredible thought that the loved one's, loved one's gifts will contribute to saving many lives and easing the suffering of those. No words, can say, no words I can say today will ever convey the humbling humility of what has been given to medical students to further their medical education. I do hope it is clear that their kindness has left its mark and will give so much to so many. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I wish to explain to you why it is that we not only thank our donors for their great gift, but also you, the families, for supporting and respecting the decisions of your loved ones. Deciding and committing to donate is a huge step for the donor, but it's also a huge step for families too. And accepting and supporting that decision is something for which we are extremely grateful. So why should this be? Well, firstly, you will have experienced many mixed feelings, and I can see that from uh, some of you here today. You are handing over a relative to be away from the family, and this will occur instead of a normal funeral, and that culturally is very, very difficult. For some, there may be images in one's mind which may be hard to bear. 
So it's important to understand what it is that anatomical donation does, what it does for our people, what it does for our students, and for patients and wider society. Now, the first thing is easy to explain, the giving of knowledge. Anatomy is the study of the structure of the human body, and as previously mentioned, it is fundamental to medical, and indeed dental and physiotherapy, practice. If surgeons did not have a good knowledge of the structure of the human body, if a radiologist couldn't quite interpret the images in front of them, or even in general practice, if the general practitioner could not explain and convey what is to be seen and done, then clearly medicine would be less effective. And so anatomy is indeed fundamental. Moreover, practical anatomy allows young hands to handle instruments safely and to learn techniques that a good proportion of them will bring into their later careers. And young hands, in my view, should be worked early so that this can be done safely and effectively. That was the easy bit of explaining. But what of experience? What of thoughts and feelings and attitudes that are gained? Well, the first thing that happens to a student when they come into the anatomy hall is they have to confront mortality. The first thing is the mortality of another person. And very many of them will experience visceral feelings. And once in a while, I must confess, I have to fetch the odd one or two off the floor. And soon follows a consideration of their own mortality. And without that, careful consideration having it brought in front of them there can be little explanation to others later little comfort or counseling when these young people go into practice another thing that practical anatomy does is it gives warnings to the young about life choices things like smoking drinking bad diet now I'm sure that many of your own uh, loved ones will have led blameless lives and will not have indulged. However, pathology is seen. And it's important that our students have an exposure to real pathology so that these life choices can be made bare. And again, it impacts on their ability to communicate with and to counsel patients later on. From this comes resilience, dealing with apprehension, acceptance of one's passing as a normal and natural process. When our students can cope with the notion of death, then they can help others cope with that notion. Another aspect of experience is respect, respect for others. And I can tell you what I see with my own eyes. I see that our donors, your loved ones, are treated with respect and compassion. And it's down to the basics. They will leave the room tidy. They will cover and, where possible, they will reconstitute. And they will do so without being asked. And in my view, this reinforces an innate goodness that is seen in our students. And what I will say about practical anatomy is this. The teaching of cadaveric anatomy strengthens our students without hardening them. And these are words that I would like you to, uh, to take on board because it doesn't harden them, it doesn't make them callous, but it does strengthen them and make them more resilient. And for that, I, I can only thank you all for supporting your relative's decision. Now, in this modern day, 
uh, we have alternative teaching methods. We have books, videos, models. But do they confront our students with mortality? Do they teach and reinforce respect? Do they teach safe handling of tissues and instruments? I would argue not. In many ways, it's a breach of the second commandment, the worshipping of graven images. Some people speak of the cost of practical anatomy, but I say that these people are cynics. They seem to know the cost of everything, but do they know the value? And to me, and to all those who teach anatomy, the gift that your family has given and that your loved one has given is something of such great value as no cost can be attributed to it. And so my final word to this, I thank our donors and I thank you all for this gift of firstly knowledge that benefits our students and patients so much and also the experience that it gives them to make them wiser, more resilient and better to counsel and comfort for the future. Thank you.
In each section of our prayers, there will be a short silence for your own personal prayers, meditations, thoughts, or reflections. And we will conclude our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer, which you are welcome to join in with if you wish to do so. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of your whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life and the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. Today, we gather to remember loved ones and their generous gift of themselves to medical education. We also thank their families and friends and their presence with us today. We hold those who have died before you now, and in the quietness of our hearts, we commend them to your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are grateful for the gift of healing through medicine. We pray for those who work in medical education, research and training, and for the staff and students of our medical and dental schools. Give them wisdom in their learning, imagination in their research, and compassion in their care for their patients. Sustain in them their reverence for life and truth so that the lives of many may be enriched. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn, for our own journeys through grief and loss. God of comfort, source of the whole world's gladness and bearer of our pain, be with us in times of darkness and make us aware of your eternal and unending love lighting up our paths. Guide us through the wilderness, protect us through life storms and bring us home rejoicing at the wonders you have shown us. Uniting our prayers in the prayer that Jesus taught us, we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Please stand. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forevermore. Amen.